Hey YouTube, first time viewers, friends, and all. Hope everything's going fine for all of you. Well, we've had a few days now to be watching the carnage and destruction of Sandy. <clears throat> we remember whenever it first began to build as a hurricane, it was termed a hurricane. I don't believe they're calling it such a hurricane anymore. It is uh, something different. What we have on the screen now is I zoomed on over to Harp and I started thinking about all the weird anomalies with this storm. And uh, I backtracked and looked at all the charts and everything. Well, this could be a natural event, but it is uh, obviously a natural event if it were to be one that does not occur too very often. Um, I think the 24th is about the time it was in the Jamaica region. So this is what we see when we look back to the 24th. The days passing after the 24th look relatively um, non-existent as far as readings. As you can see, leading up to the 29th, we're pretty well, it would seem to be from 24 to 29, not too much of anything. And then we get up to just, a, you know, 30th, and we start seeing some different activities. Uh, the sun's relatively quiet, mainly, at this point. So I did not know if anybody else was checking on this. I'll go ahead and bring it back up. We'll go through it again. This is about the time is it in the Jamaica region. And then we're going to go about five days and it pretty well looked like no activity. Thirtieth and on Halloween. So I begin to wonder with all the anomalies of this storm as big as the storm was with all the wind and the rain and the snow it is a very strange but powerful storm bringing death and destruction and fear is it possible that this is man-made by the heart machine it is something you have to think about because they can and do alter the weather. They can and do create earthquakes. And if we think back shortly before the pounding of the coast, we had the 7.7 .7 earthquake off of Canada resulting in the tsunami uh, warning and the small tsunami for Hawaii and thank God that the wave height did not get to what they thought it might be. Uh, I'm glad to see that. But yet, that was a very very large earthquake. So we had a very large earthquake off the coast of Canada and then a few days later we have the pounding of the coastline. So we see a combination of the two within days of one another. And when I ponder the question is are both of these things natural events that just happen to occur at the same time? Is this a natural event that just happened to have snow tremendous wind 
and a lot of waves, rain and high tide sea waves blowing in. It also happened to occur right about the time of the moon changing to full. So you got big time surges. And I myself am starting to believe that it is very possible they use the heart machine to manufacture the storm. Now, when you're watching this struggle for power between King Obama and Mitt Romney, both of these parties, as I've said before, are owned lock, stock, and barrel by pretty much the same entity. <clears throat> But not everyone within that power group that wants to control things and puts these people in place agree all the time. You do have infighting within the little group about how about they're going to go about things, the timetable they're going to run things, etc. So it is possible There are some that want Romney in, and there are some that want Obama in. But it will lead to the same end, which will be American default on their debt, which will lead to more changes within our country. So I thought that this little quote has been in all the papers, I'm sure, by the Republican pollster and strategist. Mike McKenna it was very interesting about this storm and I think it gives you all cause to pause and think about uh, this storm and this is his quote it stops the campaign more or less dead in its tracks and this would be Romney's campaign against Obama a pause always helps the guys on defense. Obama. It helps the Obama guys catch their breath a little bit and think about what they're going to do next. If I were Romney, I'd be in Colorado and Michigan and Wisconsin. Start off with a prayer for the people. In New York and New Jersey, definitely do that. But don't stop attacking. Try to keep your momentum through this. The first part of that really makes you think. This storm stops the Romney campaign more or less dead in its tracks. And by having a pause, it helps the guys on defense, which is the Obama campaign. As we know, we've seen it for going on four years, the king, Obama, is a liar and he resorts to any tactic that he needs, he says anything he needs to, to get his way, to mislead the people, to pander to everything that we do not want. He's pandered to the Middle East. I could go on and on and on and on about all the lies that he's told. It's very searchable, very verifiable. It is undeniable. It is indefensible. The truth is what it is. The reality is just that. People must face up to the fact and stop clinging to hope, stop clinging to false belief that he has done good for our people and for our country. 
We are $16 trillion in debt, $7 trillion more than when he began. Does anybody in their right mind that has a brain between their ears not hear what I just said? Do you not get it? 16 trillion is more than 9. We did not gain control of our spending or our debt. Harry Reid was quoted the other day, uh, pretty close to his quote, is that it's, it's ridiculous to think about having a budget right now. What is ridiculous about stopping the country from defaulting on debt and going into full bankruptcy and becoming like Greece? What is ridiculous about that? What is ridiculous is how these people make these asinine statements to us as if we're little children that don't understand anything and believe they, the people in the suits on the televisions, whatever vomit that they regurgitate out of their mouth in the form of statement. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to see some more lies. This is a recent article. It is copped off of uh, Greta Van Susteren. Remember, after this attack, all the statements were that it was because of the video. And if you watch the debate, when they had Candy Crowley as the uh, moderator, the mediator, everyone heard her say, when the king commanded her, oh, Romney pinpointed him about Benghazi and not calling it a terrorist attack. He, the king, told her to get the record out check the record and she did exactly what she was not supposed to do she was not supposed to fact check during that debate but she did and she lied on national television to millions of people she lied to everyone saying that that was on the record that he did call it a terrorist attack that was a bald-faced lie to all of us what his statement was was a very vague statement about terrorism in general. He never said until much later on that this was a pre-planned terrorist attack. So, after this embassy was hit and the deaths were came about through it, you heard Clinton, Secretary of State Miss Billary Clinton, say she was in charge of all the security but you never heard her say I am the one that denied the security request for extra security there had been requests like I said before but they were denied but you never heard her say I accept the responsibility for denying the request for additional security. So all she did was damage control. And she's a cutthroat liar herself. That is obvious. She is part of their side trying to cling to control and she was trying to shield the King Obama. We now know that he has now made a statement that he told them once he found out to issue everything they needed over there to keep our people safe. So, like it's being reported now, there should be a paper trail. There should be a paper with his order on it showing that he gave that order and it should be dated. To my knowledge yet, they haven't come up with that and produced it. So, 
it is definite that this is a cover-up. Now we're going to go through here. I have not read this. So we're going to highlight some of what is said about this classified cable, which could be the smoking gun warning uh, of this cover-up. And it's being covered up because the election's coming up. So this is a news correspondent here, Catherine Herridge. The status of this cable that I really believe, having read it, is that the smoking gun warning here, you've got this emergency meeting in Benghazi less than a month before the attack. At the briefing, the people are told there are 10 Islamic mili militias and Al-Qaeda groups in Benghazi. The consulate cannot sustain a coordinated attack and that they need extra help. Less than a month before the attack is when this is being said. And this information goes directly to the office of the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. Now again, you got the culpability of the State Department. Very specific warning that they're in trouble and they need help and they see an attack on the horizon. So they were forewarned. What's the date on the cable? August 16th. Is there any response or indication that there's been any direct response to that cable between the 16th of August and September 11th? I don't know what the classified traffic was between the 16th and 11th, but I asked the State Department today, specifically given the warnings and how detailed they were in the intelligence that Al-Qaeda and these militias were operating in Benghazi, was any extra security considered or put in place in light of the 9-11 anniversary? Three weeks out. The State Department said that they wouldn't comment because it's classified. And they're also waiting for the outcome of the investigation, which you can be sure the outcome will not come until after the election is decided. Who was the signatory to the cable? Ambassador Stevens, who just happened to be killed. And you say that it was, it went to the office of State, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Was there any indication it actually went to her? I mean, I don't know what the officer, the office could be. As far as I know, there could be 60 people down a chain of command. The copy to her, to her, and then it routes out. In this case, probably typically to diplomatic security, their Near East Asia desk and others, but specifically addressed to her office. How do you get to see it? It came to me through confidential sources. Now I'm assuming this was on the television tonight, and you all may have watched it, may or may not. <clears throat> Why? I mean, it sounds to me that things are starting to break down because we're starting to get, you know, information from different sources. Both you and Jennifer Griffin are getting it. Is there sort of a bring to satisfaction in how this administration is disseminating or not disseminating information? I can't speak for why these sources come forward, but I believe, based on this cable, that the point that was being made that they wanted made public, not just in a classified setting, is that the warning that came from Benghazi was very specific. It said, we cannot withstand an attack. The militias are everywhere. Al-Qaeda is here. This was known to the U.S. intelligence community as well, and that they really could not see a situation where the security was going to turn around. They said it was trending negatively. This comes three and a half weeks before the attack. I can't think of anything that would be more specific than if these groups had emailed the State Department and said, here's the time, the place, and the method of the attack, because the cable names the two groups, Al-Qaeda and Ansar al-Sharia, that we believe are responsible for the assault. How long is the cable? I mean, it's a page, two pages, it's a little over a page. It was quite detailed, very detailed. There can be no doubt that this is really a cry for help from the people on the ground. They also talk at length that they think the 17th of February Brigade, this is the Libyan militia that's supposed to be friendly to the U.S., that's really tasked with being the police force in Benghazi, has been infiltrated by, by our enemies. 
and it is a very good and true assumption. You will find out later on that they are the enemy. <clears throat> it says the 17th February Brigade is not sharing information with the Americans anymore, so that's us. They're not sharing information. And we had information right after the attack. This brigade just kind of melted away during the attack. They were nowhere to be found. What would be the reason, or is there any reason supplied as to why the cable wasn't acted on? Is there any, any sort of, I mean, did the person you spoke to, does anybody have any idea? Did it get lost in the shuffle, or was there a diplomatic or political reason, or is there any reason I was, it wasn't acted on? Well, someone has said to me, looking at the whole story, you don't see a conspiracy when you can just see incompetency. I think uh, we sometimes know that things move very slowly in Washington, D.C., so I think, I think that's one element. But if you couple this with the fact that we're coming up to the 9-11 anniversary, and you couple this with the statement that a videotape was somehow responsible, what you see is that this is completely undercut. This cable says the militias in Al-Qaeda are here. We essentially think we are next. So, to take this attack and suggest for such a long period of time that it was a video, when you have this classified cable in the intelligence, it does not match up. But what is your, why do you think that we're not getting much information out of the administration? Is it in part because it's the CIA or is it a situation where they're trying to cover mistakes? I believe they're trying to have a real investigation. I believe we're also in the middle of something called an election in the final days. And what I see is a growing body of evidence that the State Department has culpability for the death of the ambassador and those three Americans. The warnings were specific. They were direct. They named the enemy. They said this consulate needed more support. And it also indicated in the cable the consulate should probably move long term into the annex. We now know that's a CIA facility in Benghazi. Uh, she thanks Catherine, and it's very disturbing. And you know, working in Washington, we all know people who are at the State Department, how hard they work and want to take such good care of their people. So, you know, it's, there's no. Uh, it's important for people that lost their lives to have themselves honored with the facts. And now we're starting to get them. Well, there's the proof, folks. They got the cable in advance, August 16th, 25 days before this attack. They were denied security purposely. And now, as we know, those people are dead. And, as you've not seen, the King-in-Chief has taken no responsibility. You know, it is true there was an ex-president who had a little plaque on his desk that said, the buck stops here. And that is true. Clinton may be the Secretary of State. She might be a lying scumbag that helped to cause these people to die by not giving them security that they needed. But the bottom line is the guy at the top is responsible for every employee he's got. He is just like the the captain of the ship on the high seas. The captain always goes down with the ship and makes sure the rest of his mates get off safe. He stays on the ship because he's the captain and he goes down with it. This guy is the captain of the ship. He's responsible for his subordinates, but you've not heard him take any responsibility. But you see him plastering himself all over the TV trying to get four more years. For what? Did he keep those people safe? Does it look like our embassy was safe? Does it look like the Stevens family 
and the fallen soldiers' families have got the answers. He has provided no answers. It's a confidential source leaking it so that the, we can get to the bottom of this. We've seen political covers up before. Except this is a new age, and a new day, and a new time. When we change over, if we do, I can hold out hope that things will improve for our nation. A lot of people don't like Romney. I never said I did. I'm just saying that the scumbag that's in office has got to go. I'm hoping to God they don't rig this. But like I said, they've broken the law ever since he took office. More than it's been out in our face. More than I can remember any administration since I really started paying attention to politics. These people just flat out don't care if you know what they're doing wrong. They're just saying, so what? There's nothing you can do about it, pretty much, in their actions and their words. They're treating us like idiots, and we're not, are we? Well, you got a decision to make. If the votes count, if you're going to vote, you want four more years of lies, You want seven, eight, nine trillion more dollars added on to your debt and get nothing for it? You want to have them financially rape you? Have you checked the poverty level now? Check it out. The poverty level has grown from 12% to 15% in the last four years. 15% of the people live in poverty. Does that sound like they've made a lot of jobs and improved everything? How can that be? If the economy's on the mend and the upswing, how can that be? You went seven trillion in the hole in four years. Your poverty rate increased three percent. Now there's more people on in poverty. It is just hollow, meaningless words. It is just fake numbers that they put out about things getting better. They're taking us down the crapper. And you need to slap yourself in the face if you're an Obama supporter because he has done nothing. My health care premium as a single man increased. He said premiums would go down, did he not? <clears throat> and I want to hear input from anybody out there listening to me right now. If your premium went down I want you to write me, I want you to tell me, I want you to tell me how much it went down, if you're single, or if you have family coverage, or what. Because I don't know anybody, personally, that I've spoken to, that theirs went down. All the guys where I work at, that are on family coverage for their families, it went up. So I guess the only people it went down for were the people that didn't pay anything to begin with. Uh, zero from zero is zero. I guess that's how they figure their math. Remember, they used to call the Bush fuzzy math, the things that don't add up, the little catchy name, fuzzy math. Oh, that's fuzzy math. But we got, you know, we got plenty of names for their math. It's just one name fits all lies. So, Romney may not be any better, but you can't keep this dirt in. You just can't do it. You got to get rid of him and hope to God and pray to God that somehow the next guy that gets in will not take us down this path even though we may get to, get to go down the same path, maybe, maybe, he'll grow some cojones 
and fight against the people pushing him to take us to the end of the path. Maybe he won't. But at least you can have hope with a different guy. You can't have no hope with this guy. There's nothing to hope for. He's done nothing. You have to face that, Democrats. You have to face that, liberals. You got to stop this stupid crap of being a party person. I'm a Democrat, so I'm going to vote for a Democrat. I always vote Democrat. You got to get out of that crap. Why, why do you think there's only two parties? Either or. Boy. Wow. Gee. You got a whole choice there. One of two. Hmm. Think about it. Think about what it's become. The guy said he'd get rid of the lobbyists. He didn't do it. He's got more lobbyists in there now than Bush did. The guy said he'd take a scalpel to the budget and cut out all kinds of programs that didn't work and that were unnecessary and, and blew money. He didn't. The government jobs are the, are, the, are the area that have grown the most jobs since he's been in there. All he's done is enlarge government. There were no shovel-ready jobs. And how many people could operate a shovel anyway? That was stupid for people to even believe that. I mean, you know, how many people can get out there and bust their back with a shovel? Not everybody. So that in and of itself was ignorant to be making those claims. Yeah, we need rose bridges and all that stuff upgraded, but not everybody can do that, can they? Pardon me for getting a little uh, into it, so to speak. But I'm fed up with it. I've been pouring through everything I can get my hands on for all these different things for the last several, several, several weeks. I've been listening to these statements that these ignoramuses make and all these claims that are out and out bald-faced lies. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of it. And whenever voting day comes, you need to show that you're tired of it too. Aren't you tired of $3 a gallon gas? And that's another thing. Isn't it kind of funny? that when he got pinpointed in the debate, hey, gas has doubled under you. It was a dollar eighty six, you know, whenever whenever you came in, and it doubled, man, under you. Isn't it funny that just a couple of days after that statement was made, well, we had to have some gas starting to come down, didn't we? Yeah, we did. It's three dollars and fifteen cents a gallon here now and 86 miles to my south a few days ago it was 297 in Oklahoma City if that's not manipulation and please don't jump the gun and blame the greedy evil oil companies if you're gonna blame anybody about the price of gas who do they have to buy it from mainly on the world market the price is dictated by ta-da Arab oil producing nations called OPEC how many gallons are in a 55 gallon barrel of oil <laughs> I just told you 55 divide 55 into the price of the barrel and that is how much the oil companies pay before they do anything with it and process it and bring it to your gas pump so you can put it into your vehicle. 
who makes more money? Ta-da! OPEC and the world market. Let's stop blaming the oil companies. They gotta make money, they gotta play employees. I'm sick and tired of they're not the greatest thing in the world, you know, and you gotta have laws in place to make sure that they don't rip you off. I'm not saying that they don't try. Do the math though. When you see the other guy they buy it from is making more off the gallon than they are, then why are you blaming the guy who's making less than the OPEC? And you do the homework and you find out that the deals were cut back in way back in the day, 40 years ago or so, between corrupt administration and the Arab produce, oil producing nations. That's why we are where we are today. Because of something that happened, a deal that was brokered worldwide back then. It has come to fruition now. That's why we're not pumping a buttload of oil out. I can remember in my town when the oil boom was was still going before it, it started crapping out. In the late 70s, towards 1980, when I graduated high school. There were so many people that came to our town that they were living in parks. We didn't have enough hotels, motels, trailers, or anything. They were actually living in vehicles and stuff in the parks. There was no place for them to live because there were so many jobs to be had because we were domestically producing oil. We had a refinery right here in my town. Champlin Refinery. Lots of people's fathers and mothers mainly their dads, you know, mothers worked in the office and administrative duties, but the fathers worked in a general plant, a refinery. Supported their families, put their kids through school and college and whatnot for years. Made a good living. A lot of us kids wanted to go to work at the refinery when we got out of high school. And about that time, well, the deals that were brokered a decade before we graduated came to fruition and then the refinery went out of business and then the oil field jobs started being less 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 and finally it got to a point like it is now 40 years 30 years later after 1980 this is not something cyclical it can be done safely and it can be done cleanly if you do it right We could be producing our own oil. We've got we've got centuries worth right underneath our feet, for God's sakes. Doesn't it strike you odd that you have centuries worth underneath your own country's land, but you will not get it out so that you can buy it from OPEC or other world sources and make them rich? Hello? ding a -ling, ding 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 Is there a light bulb going off in front of everybody's face? You know, or over their heads or something? We've been screwed for a long time. And whether this deal will help us or not, you got a chance to make a difference in a small way if this is not going to be manipulated. Pray God that it won't be. But you got to get in there and you got to get this guy out. It's got to be done. I promise you, if he don't go, we're going down the crapper. We're already headed down the crapper. But he's going to flush us all the way down. 
Romney might flush us all the way down to. <clears throat> and I know a lot of you say, well, hey, Romney outsourced jobs to China. Oops, excuse me. But what you have to remember is that all began well before Romney even became a presidential candidate. Let's not forget how many Amer Americans don't have jobs at this time, they say. 23, 24 million, right around in that figure. Well, how about NAFTA and GATT? Didn't King Obama, when he campaigned in 2007, didn't, didn't he get quoted as saying that they need those treaties need to be renegotiated? Have you seen any renegotiating on them yet? No. And when did them jobs begin to be shipped over, taken away from us? Of which you have heard him make a statement that a lot of them jobs won't be coming back here. He's on record, on video, you can find it, it's provable, he said it. It was Daddy Bush, Bush 1, that did. he did not sign that into law. He did not sign NAFTA and GATT into law. So don't blame him for doing it, but he did draw up the framework for NAFTA and GATT. And he did want a new world order. But it was the guy after him that took the office and took his left hand. I believe he's left handed too. And pinned his name on it and signed it into law. And what is that traitor's name? What is that lying traitor's name? Bill Clinton. NAFTA and GATT, if you look it up, were signed into law by Bill Clinton. So if you want to blame a guy for shipping our jobs away, you blame Bill Clinton because he was the captain of the ship and he had an opportunity to say no. He could have wiped his rectum with that and threw it in the trash. He could have took his lighter to it and burned it up. He could have took his two hands and ripped it up into shreds and threw it in his trash can. But instead, he pinned it into law and that's when our jobs began going away. And now we got what we got. But Romney may not be a sweet cup of tea, and maybe his company outsourced some jobs. But in no way, shape, or form does the amount of jobs that he could have possibly outsourced through his company dealings even make a pimple on a camel's butt compared to the amount of jobs shipped overseas by Bill Clinton pinning NAFTA and GATT into law. So you got to have some kind of hope that the next guy in line will at least delay the inevitable as long as possible. And I believe that's the difference between the two of them. I believe one set of elites backs Obama and the other set of elites backs Romney. I believe one set of elites has an agenda to do things a certain way and get it done at a certain timetable and crash the things by date X. I believe the other set of elites has a slower plan but has a date X to crash things also. But I believe it. one is a farther date off than the other one. Obama, I believe, is the sooner date. Romney, I believe, would be the later date. So, you got to do some thinking, and you got to do it fast.
turn off American Idol, sit down with your family, do some talking, do some searching, find the facts, find the truth. One other little thing at the end to my friend in Canada. I'm going to say it once again. Barack Obama and Osama bin Laden are not the same person. Osama is not Obama. Obama is not Osama. They may have Islam in common, but they are not the same person. Alex Jones is not the deceased stand-up comedian. I had a guy in high school looked almost exactly like me. We were continually getting mistaken by girls and, you know, different guys that went to other schools that knew him would see me and think that I was him. Same hair, same height, same build, blue eyes, etc. There's a double almost for everyone in the world. Uh, everybody should know that by now. So, come on, get off of it. You can be more helpful than playing the same record over and over. It's like it's got a scratch in it. and keep singing the same tune. And you're singing the wrong one. Don't mean to offend you. But the truth is what it is. And that ain't true what you've been saying. You can keep saying it, but it ain't gonna make it any truer than it was. I'm sorry to be brutal, but that's just the way it is. People are people, and them two guys aren't the same guy, and Obama and Osama aren't the same guy. So, Halloween may not be a real, uh, you know, big time holiday we know its origins and its real true true meaning but uh, the way it's come along it's mainly for little children you know they can get out and they don't know anything about the real origins and the meaning and stuff to them it's just a fun time so I hope everybody's children had a fun time and got lots of candies and goodies and laughed and enjoyed I hope you got some pictures of them and made some good memories. Um, I have a friend tomorrow. His mother is 75. I believe he said she is 75. <clears throat> She's going to be undergoing a uh, double bypass. I believe she is 80% plugged on one and 90% plugged on the other. I have a bad feeling about that operation and what's going to happen on the table. So I would ask you to uh, help pray for my friend. His name is Scott. I'm not sure what his mother's name is, but I'd ask to pray that everything goes well for his mother. Uh, she's a nice lady from what I understand. I've not met her yet. I plan to try and uh, go and meet her over Thanksgiving if she's you know, well enough to receive company. I believe she'll be recuperating at her daughter's house if she if she makes it to the recuperation stage. Um, I don't quite think he's ready to to lose his mama. Nobody is, but I don't think uh, you know maybe he's thought that far ahead of what if. But since I've lost mine three years ago I don't claim to be an expert, but I kind of have a little more foresight into them things. And my other middle brother has had a angioplasty, he's had a stent, he's had a bypass, a double bypass. His latest one was a triple bypass, so I kind of know how the bypass stuff goes. And she'll be in for some, uh, unless they have a new technique to do it. 
you know, if they're going to cut her chest and go through the breastplate and then cut her leg and take veins out and wire them in, she'll be in for uh, some pain in recuperating. And uh, I pray that God is with her and guides the surgeon's hand and keeps it steady and that she gets to get the blood flowing back to her her heart real good so that she can feel better and have a little more time with her boys. Her husband passed away oh, about six years ago. So it is just her and her sons and her one daughter. So I pray for all of you, whatever your situations are. I pray that you'll have wisdom when you think about all these things I've shown you and told you. And you'd be thinking about this storm and about the quote I read you about how it puts the uh, campaign on hold and it gives an advantage to the defender, which would be the traitor, the liar, King Obama, so he can play catch up. Now he's trying to look like he's Johnny on the spot, the great helper. Nothing like creating a situation, huh? To where you can uh, look like the helper? Nothing like uh, denying the security and creating this situation here, huh? There is uh, an ultimate reason why this is done, and it's going to be unfolding. It's not ineptness, and it's not uh, just he's an idiot. There's something more sinister behind it, and we'll find that out. Mark my words, we will. So you all take care, and I'll keep digging, and I'll keep thinking, and I'll bring you something soon. May God bless you and keep you safe till I talk to you all again. Keep watching the skies. There's some very, very interesting things going on.